Greetings and welcome to another exciting World of Tanks video. This one is the one you know about. Don't choose your free experience tank until you see this video because I'm going to show you stuff that you may not have considered. So, and I'm also going to show you the ones that are basically in my final group of tanks that I had to decide which one I was going to get. But the first thing I want to do is show you the one that I didn't know was on the list because I had this tank and I could not see that it was available for free experience. And that is the Heavy Metal Heroes ISU-130 Russian Tank Destroyer or Sniper Tank as I call it. Tier 8 Butt Kicker is what it is. It's really good, and that is one of the criteria that we discussed in our clubhouse. We were talking this, this afternoon about this, which tank to select, etc. And the, the tanks that came to mind, it was like, well, the things that were the most important were how expensive are they? Also... Are they good to play in matches? Do you have them already? That's an important one, obviously. And is this something you're going to play? So a tank can be great in matches, but if you don't like to play that type of tank, then why would you get it? I mean, now, there are people who just collect them to, to have them because they like the way they look, completely valid I'm not one of those guys so there's a lot of tanks on that list that fit the bill of well yeah I just would like to have it just because it looks cool even though I might not play it all right I have some tanks that fit that but they were tanks I got for free not tanks that I selected oh well so it's just one of those things um that you have to consider so this one i have this in fact the funny part is this tank was the first tank i ever received from any card which is good because it's a good one i played some matches today just to get the the feel again for it had it i was in a 10 match that we ended up losing but i killed two guys kind of speaks for itself so it's an actually good tank you know, my record in this tank isn't good, but it ain't because of the tank. It's because of the teams that I was on were not good. So, like today, you have, I'm in a tier 10 match with a tier 8 sniper tank. I kill two guys. What's wrong with you? The 10s didn't do their job as a group. You can't have 10s going in there, big goose egg, when the tier 8 guy like me comes in and kills two guys. So, you got to be better. It's just that simple. So, if you're considering this tank as one of them, now this is with a camo. This is the winter camo that I have on this tank. This is not the stock color. Let me get the, uh, show you, I mean, you kind of already probably know what the stock color is. Oops, wrong one. Oops, also wrong one. Ha, ha, ha. There we go. default this is the default and man it looks awesome this is the default skin color with the black stripe and the red star so it's an awesome tank highly useful to say the least now let's go Look at the list of, actually, let's not do it here. In the news, this is where you would go to find the list where they had the birthday cake because of the ninth year of the game. And I got my ninth year celebration stuff a couple of days ago. Uh, you know, just the nine year emblem. Okay, these are sales, 
Ha ha. Are those returning? I don't know. These are the free XP tanks. The Beach Party. The Stark STRV. That is the blue and yellow Swedish flag sniper. Alpine Tiger is a Chinese black or dark gray with the tiger emblem on the side, you know, in steel. It looks awesome. The Legion 59 Patton, the Nomad Samoa, the Fortress Ferdinand. What the heck is that, dude? It's tiny letters. The Canon Yagpanzer 105. We got that already. King Tiger is another good one. There's the ISU 130, I believe that. The Verzilla, the Fatherland, the Deathstalker, Patton, and the Patriot. Now, for myself, the ones that I had looked at to make my really my final cut was the Patriot and. What else do we have? King Tiger, of course. The Nomua. I mean, the no Nomad Somua. The Stark Swedish flag tank. And really, I mean, the Alpine Tiger is good. But uh, it's a heavy tank. I'm not a big heavy tank player in general. It's, I mean, it's a standard cannon heavy tank. So, basically, when you look at the free experience price, the more experience required, the more gold they charge for this tank. So, the 300,000 plus tanks are the ones that are the most expensive to buy. Um, like, the Nomad is a 15,000. The Fatherland is a 15,000 gold price. The, uh, what is it? Is that all? Those two are the only two. Those are the only two that are over 15,000. But you have other ones like the King Tiger is a 13,800. So that's important. Now, on the, uh, on the opposite side, if you don't have a lot of free experience, the cheaper ones like the Legion 59 Patton might be within your range. And what you can do also, as well as the Deathstalker 46 Patton, because you can go to the store and choose the conversion. It'll convert basically 1,000 gold into 25,000. I'm sorry, one, yeah, 1,000 gold into 25,000 free experience. So basically, it's 4,000 gold if you're like 100,000 free experience short. If it's if it's if you're more if you're shorter than that, you're probably you know, unless you really want it. But if you're way short, it's going to be kind of well, not not a, not the greatest deal in town. It's a, an okay price. I mean, you if you're like one hundred and fifty thousand short for buying any of these tanks, that's six thousand gold, which isn't bad for some of these tanks. This depends what your what your you know, what's floating your boat, as they say. Because everybody's got a different thing of wants versus needs and what you have. So now myself, I already have the HMH ISU 130. I don't need it. So that one's out of consideration. The ones that were for me, the main consideration were the, were, were the expensive ones. So, you know, that covers... The ones I told you. And the most expensive is the Fatherland and the Nomad Somua. Now, the Fatherland, the Fishman says it's kind of an eh tank that looks awesome. You know, it's got a great look to it. The Alpine Tiger is another very good heavy tank that looks phenomenal. So that one was also of interest. But I'm not that kind of a heavy tank player. I already have a couple... You know, 
In fact, I got the Dreadnought out of a card. So I, it's another cannon heavy tank. I really don't need any of those. I've got the, the Icebreaker, which I'm happy with that one. I like that. I like the way it looks. The Dreadnought's the same way. It looks really cool. I don't really need another one of those tanks that I hardly play. So basically the Fatherland was out for me because it's just not that great of a tank from, you know, the fish. He told, he tells us, no, he's got all these tanks basically. Um, King Tiger, I'm a Tiger tank guy. The only thing that stopped me from really buying it, you know, picking this one outright was the camo isn't the greatest camo. I'm like, who comes up with this? That brown looks kind of rusty, and it's like, eh, it's okay. It's not bad. But, man, come on. Give me a real camo. Desert, Africa core, or give me woodland camo that looks, you know, bad. It just looks more impressive. It just doesn't look as impressive. So I was like, eh. But it's really close. Um, that is the 13,800 gold tank that has been in cards before. And that was another thing to look at. Tanks that have been in the cards. I got my ISU 130 from a card. The uh, other ones like the KJ Panzer 105, we got that from the season. So forget that. But otherwise, that's another great tank, actually. Fortress Ferdinand, again, we, the review was eh, not that great. Okay, well, we weren't really interested. It looks kind of hideous. I don't care for that kind of camo. Anything that looked hideous, like the Fortress Ferdinand, off my list. Sorry. That's just how I roll. Beach Party does nothing for me. If it's the only one you can afford and you think it's good because it's basically another um, Trinity variant, Okay, it's supposed to be very accurate, like the uh, Trinity Mark II, because it's the same tank. It's just got, you know, it's more of a skin variant of the Trinity Mark II, which I have already. So I don't need a beach party. And I just don't like the spikiness of it. That's just me. Okay. But on the performance, it, it, it had a good rating of performance. I have another friend of mine who said he has the Verzilla. I don't know how he acquired it. He says it's garbage. Just that's what he says. So I was, I don't like it. It's hideous. I was not interested in the Verzilla. So really it boiled down to the Stark. I'll go ahead and, you know, click on these final ones for me. The blue Swedish flag. Man, it's pretty awesome. That dude is expensive. 11.9. Not as expensive as some of the others, but it's still up there. It's up there. And it's, a, it's really cool looking. I like the look of it. The Tiger Tank. I'll show you if you have not seen this. You don't get a good look at the at the rustiness of the turret. Eh, it's okay. I mean, I'm sure it'd be all right. Thirteen thousand eight hundred. That was that tank was in the store last week at half price. I declined. I'm not paying seventy one hundred for that either, because it just doesn't look cool enough. If it looked right, I'd have bought it last week. So I'm like, eh, whatever. Oh, yes, the Patriot was also in my final list. I, I didn't scroll down far enough. I forgot about that. The Patriot is another good one. In fact, we did a head-to-head -head comparison between the Patriot and the Tiger, I'm the King Tiger. And the Patriot was better in every regard except the hit points. We were shocked that the Patriot actually was better. 15,180. For the Nomad Samoa. There's a, it's kind of a butt kicker. And let me show you the Patriot. Now the Patriot I like also. Hey. What the heck. Oh, no, let's go this way. Forward to the news. Forward to the tanks. I don't know how it. Jumped forward. 
or jumped backwards actually. So let me show you in case you don't recall off the top of your head. The Patriot. The T26 E5 is the Patriot. The T26 E4 is the Freedom. The Freedom is slightly better as a medium tank because it is tier preferential, meaning it never fights up tier 10. It only fights up to nines. This one, unfortunately, fights tier 10s. That's, its one, that's one of its main weaknesses. But in the statistical categories and the comparisons, this thing was a hair better than the, the King Tiger. I was shocked. 12,440. But it looks cool. This one has a very weathered look. You can see it better in the premium tech tree. It has a very weathered and worn paint job as opposed to the Freedom, which has the you know brand new showroom floor paint job. That's the main difference between the two of them, red, white, and blue, of course, each American. So really, those were my four that I was thinking about. Now let me go back to the premium tech tree. This is the fatherland. Now the thing that the, that's most attractive about this is the Soviet Union graphic design of this tank with the hammer and sickle logo. So if you're, you know, if you like that USSR graphic design, which their graphic design was quite good, I know, you know, I've worked as a graphic designer myself. So it appeals to a lot of people and I like it. It's cool looking, but I'm not a big heavy tank guy. So I don't need, I'm not interested in this one or the Alpine Tiger for the, just because of the type of tanks that they are. Those aren't going to be, I'm not going to play those. See, that's one of my things there. It's I scratched it off my list because I'm just not going to play the fatherland, you know, if I was going to play it, I'd have the Alpine Tiger in there because that thing just looks fantastic. But again, this is the Alpine Tiger. I'm just not going to play this tank, and that's the problem. But this, like, sculptured steel design of the Tiger in the weeds is phenomenal. The only thing that's criminal about it is that you can't get any closer to it and really see the details. It's really bogus. Because look at that, the tiger tail is right there. It's just fantastic. This is one of the best looking tank tanks there is. Look at that paw on the side. It's an awesome tank. I mean, if you choose this tank, you're gonna be proud to go, dude, I got this, for, I got this for free experience. It's awesome. It is awesome. I am just not gonna play it. That's the problem. It looks fantastic. So the thing is not, Legion is also one, the 59 Legion, or Legion 59 Patton is another great tank. But I'm American. If I wanted this tank, I don't want the black version. I want a, I want a U.S. Army green. Sorry, pass. That's just, you know, that's who I am. So the, what was the other one? That's, the other one in, in the final category is of course the Stark and this butt kicker Nomad. Now the Nomad is good. I have several Frenchy auto loaders, which is that's what this is. And that's the French auto loader turret. And I can tell you they're fantastic. If you don't have any, you are missing out. I'm just gonna tell you, if you don't have that 1357 that came up for sale in the store, buy it. It's great. It's a junior version of this. Now it's a light tank, but it's the same kind of thing. It's got an eight shot auto loader. This one has a five shot. So, but and it's a heavy tank. Now, where's that Stark? I think it's over here. That blue guy. There's the beach party. So if the beach party, you know, is of interest to you, 
excellent, and I mean excellent accuracy in, on this tank. The accuracy on this tank, let's see, is the stock accuracy of this tank. 0 0.30. 0 0.30 is at the very beginning of sniper quality. So if you're 0.30, you're a sniper quality accuracy, and, and that's stock. That's not even reduced. When you reduce it, it gets down to like 0.2 or 0.21. It's nasty awesome. It's the same as the, the Trinity Mark II, which I have. Same, everything is the same, except it's, you know, the color is different. You got the lightning bolts on the side and those goopy spikes, which bug me. And eh, that's just the way it is. But in performance shooting, it's got good shooting. Yeah, kind of, you know, that 48 speed is misleading. It has bad horsepower. So it doesn't accelerate worth a crud. And up the hill, it is slow. So, that's just, you know, info from someone who knows. But it shoots great. Once you get into position, you can make some shots. And that's a key That's a key thing. This dude is right up there. That was really my original thinking. I almost bought this one immediately. Because it was like, oh, do you have the blue one? You do? Oh, man, I want to get this. Now, the thing is, I'm not choosing this one only because of all of these guys that are in my final selection. It's the cheapest one. It could be bought again. I could literally buy this for cheaper than I could buy the others if they were available. Some of them are black boxes. The black boxes are, you know, rarely up uh, and available like the Alpine Tiger. No, I'm sorry, Alpine Tiger is not a black box. But these other... Are any of these black boxes? I guess none of these are black boxes because all the black boxes are uh, not available. Hmm, okay, well, there you go. My mistake. Bottom line, I didn't, get the, I didn't select the Stark because it's cheaper. It's just that simple. And it can be gotten down the road for cheaper price. Now... Tanks that have been in cards or are in cards, like the Patriot right now is in the red cards. I'm not saying I'm going to get one, but the thing is, the fact that it's in a card now, or, ha or tanks that have been in cards in the past are card options that you could get lucky and score. Like I got very lucky and got the HMH ISU 130 from a card. It was the first tank I ever got from a card. So... That's another thing. Things Tanks that were in cards and have been gotten from cards are, are lower on my list because they're easier to get. That's why I wanted to go for the stuff that's the hardest to get. Let's, like the expensive stuff, the Fatherland, the Somua, uh, the King Tiger. Because they're more difficult to acquire either due to their expense or whatever factors. But King Tiger is another one that's been in the, the cards before. For sure, we talked to Fish. He remembered it. So, really, Alpine Tiger is another one. So, really, what it boils down to is that what I did is I had a list of the tanks that I wanted mentally. I didn't have an actual physical list. But I had a mental list. And the mental list, I was like, well, I came up with reasons to chop things off. It's been in a card or it's in a card. Much easier. Remove it. Goodbye, Patriot. And I, I, I like the Patriot. It was the Patriot, the Stark Swedish flag tank, the Somua, and the King Tiger were all tanks that I almost broke down and, and instantly bought them. Before I analyzed it, I said, no, analyze it first. You know, make the video and explain this to people so they'll have the benefit of the clubhouse discussion that we had about these different tanks. And for myself, um, the decision, I just kept trimming it off. Goodbye, Patriot. I didn't want the Fatherland because it's not really that great, in, you know, according to my sources. This is an opinion. So I'm not telling you not to get the Fatherland if that's what's interesting to you. Look, you know, don't get something based on hearsay that's opinion get stuff which that's 
factual. The fact that it looks fantastic and is a terrific example of Soviet graphic art, that's a that's a that's a, a positive. The fact that it's ultra rare and it's super expensive, another positive reason to get it. It's kind of mediocre. Not that it's bad, it's just it's kind of a, an average tank. Um long you know, long reload, etc. Okay, it's fine. It's not really bad, it's just if, but it's bad it, it, when when the when the word bad is used. If I use that word, which I think I did, it's in the context of for its price, it's not as good as it should be. Is why I would say quote unquote that it would be bad. Okay, I'm not saying it's a bad tank. It's not a it's not a good deal for me. It's a bad deal for me. It's not bad as a tank. It's bad as a deal. I don't like that deal because. It doesn't have things that I would want, and so it might be awesome for you. All of these tanks are great, and would be great selections for the certain player. And I'm just trying to give you the way that we looked at it and, and analyzed it. But I, you know, I, I got the Fatherland off because it's not, I just don't play that kind of tank. The same thing for the Alpine Tiger, which I think is a phenomenal tank and looks great. Okay, I'm just not interested. I mean, I have the Grim Reaper. I did not buy the Death Chariot because it's basically an Alpine Tiger and I don't want that tank. And it looked awesome too. So, whatever. The Stark is probably the cheapest of the bunch that made my final cut. And it's been in cards before and it'll be in cards again, I'm sure of it. So, check it off. No good. Not no good, but I'm not getting it. Patriot... Again, another great tank. I'm going to get the Patriot one day eventually, but not today. Again, it's in cards right now. It's a gettable tank, much cheaper than the rest. So really, it gets trimmed down pretty quickly to King Tiger because 13,800. And I know it's a good tank. It's a King Tiger, and I'm a Tiger tank guy. And the, uh, the Nomad Somua. Because, as I just told my, told my friends in the clubhouse, I said, look, I have the T-77, which is a three-shot autoloader with the same turret. And it's fantastic for a three-shot tank. It's quite effective. And one of the things that we looked at is the damage per minute, which is terrible. But here's, here's the thing that separates the men from the boys, as the saying goes. And that is, it's not the stats. You have to understand the context of, of what those stats are. And I'm going to show you what that is. All right. Well, actually, you know what? Instead of showing you this Nomad first, let me show you the T-77 first. It makes a difference. This is the T-77. American heavy tank, three-shot autoloader. You notice that turret is exactly the same as that uh, Samoa or so close that you know it's his brother or cousin whatever you want to call it t77 tier 8 heavy tank three shot autoloader if you don't have it uh you don't understand specifically and that's why i'm going to show you this is the flashpoint skin that came with this tank we got this from a season two or three seasons ago very good tank i run this tank whenever i'm doing a heavy tank contract or tank a, con a heavy a contract would allows me to use a heavy tank in the stages three shot autoloader because how you play this is very important so this one 360 damage so it'll do 1080 damage in a magazine all right and let's go and look at some stats here now here's the dealio the reload this is Adjusted 37.5. You get uh, what is the intra clip reload means two seconds. So you fire in four seconds, basically, you can fire, reload, fire, reload, fire three shots. And the damage per minute is terrible 1559. So, uh, you look at that stat, you go, man, that's horrible. The King Tiger and the 
Patriot were both over over 2,000. I know that the Patriot was for sure. The Tiger was close. Tiger was a little bit less than the, than the Patriot. But that's misleading. The reason it's misleading is it's not how you're never going to sit there with your tank, this T-77, and the enemy tank across from each other, firing and firing and firing for a minute until you kill one of you kills each other. That's not how it works. This tank does have a bad damage per minute, but that's not how it works. It works where it's essentially covered, pops out, boom, boom, boom in four seconds, and then retreats back to cover. And in that regard, you know, if you, if you, if you made a graph, it would spike during the firing. So really it does 1,080 damage in just over four seconds. And I say over because as a human, you can't get the full instant firing for the most part. So in a hair over four seconds, you could do 1,080 damage. Well, that Nomad Somua is a five shot autoloader that does 300 damage. It'll do a $1,500, 1,500 damage in its magazine, which is a little, it, it takes a little bit longer to, to do that. And I'm going to show you. All right, we're back to the Nomad. I said we're back to the Nomad. Karudski. Oh, it helps to have damage per minute, 1,608. Oh, whoop-de-doo. But again, that's you don't sit there for a minute and fire. Intra-clip intra -clip reload, 2.25 seconds. So basically what happens is you fire reload four times and, and firing every time that gives you 10 seconds in 10 seconds you're going to drill 1500 points into this guy escape hopefully to coverage and then wait for your reload now this is 47 stock it hasn't been changed normally the good estimation it's a little bit less than 0.8 so 0.8 of that would be 32 plus 5.6 we've got 37 and 0.6 seconds essentially for the reload so that's the thing it's the spike that you're looking for that's how the killing is done is when you zip in you know guys a guy is engaged you zip in with your auto loader heavy tank drill the magazine to this guy hopefully kill him and if not doing maximum damage of your magazine and then getting the heck out of there and coming back only when you're reloaded and with five shots it's a little better than three shots that's why the T-77, which is a good tank, and I perform well with that tank because I know how to use it. It works well as a sniper. So will this one. I have those Frenchy tanks that have this turret or variations of this turret at different tiers. Let me show them to you. All right. Here you go. This is the tank cup. Now, that's a regular gun. Forget that one. That was a tank cup tank. AMX Chaffee. Does it look familiar? This is the tier seven, six shot autoloader, butt kicker. This is the AMX 1357, the one that was on sale for 2,700 gold on the special sales. Instantaneous buy because of all the others I have. It's fantastic. Vanguard. Now this is the smallest, tiniest, another butt kicker. It's a sniper. These are all snipers, okay? Not this one. Chaffee, AMX 1357, Vanguard. These are snipers with speed. HMH 58, uh, the bigger brother of the Vanguard, three shot auto loader for both. Does that turret look familiar? It should. It's the same designer. So, butt kicker, sniper, monster speed on the 58. So, this is the thing. The Barask is also. A two-shot autoloader. Very good medium tank. The more bullets you have, the better. So, needless to say, the AMX Chaffee is a butt kicker with six bullets. The 1357 is a butt kicker with eight bullets. Now, they're, they're only 90 points of damage each, but eight times 90 is 720. For a tier six, that's pretty darn awesome so this is the thing 
this is where the studying and analysis of your brain allows you to extrapolate what was probably going to be the case is that for me and this is for me and people of my style who are snipers and effective as a sniper the Samua is the clear choice because this one is going the Samua this is not the Samua it's the same color this is the 1357 and this thing is a butt kicker but any of these French autoloaders and yes I don't have a couple of those one of those notably being the Jackal which I want because it has a Sherman base with this killer turret on there and like and that's a six shot auto loader and I, I would like to have that jackal because it would be fun these are fun tanks to play and that is the key most people don't really pay attention as much to that as they should so this is the process that i used and we had the discussion myself armored wraith fish and other guys that I've talked to. Now, it's all, you know, different um, for different people. Now, Armored Wraith, he didn't have enough free experience to get this one. So he's probably going to get, I'm thinking, he's, he's he was considering some of the same ones, but he just didn't have enough. Well, actually, I think he had enough to get this one. He just couldn't get any more. So, I don't know exactly. But I'm thinking... Well, I'm going to buy this tank here. I'm buying this this uh, Nomad Somua tank because I know how to play these French tanks. And they're great for me. These may not be the best choice for you, but that doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not choosing this tank to tell you what you need to buy. I just want to give you the, the advantage of understanding our mental process so that you can take that mental process and use it on your stuff and go well dude i'm awesome with you know standard gun heavy tanks so that alpine tiger looks fantastic or that fatherland might look fantastic to you everyone's going to be different you know some people are like dude i want that patriot and the patriot compared you do the stat comparisons and we did it armored wraith was looking at the tiger he goes, well, what about this stat? And I'm like, bam. He's like, dang. I was on the, the Patriot. He's like, the Patriot was just a hair better statistically in every category. Better damage per minute. Now, these were stock. They were very close. Or, you know, statistically, they were basically even tanks. You know, one was a little better here. The other one's a little better there. Either way, you know, the, the Tiger had more hit points. That was one of the things it had. That's a big one. It had more hit points, slower rotations, a little bit slower in the speed. Patriot was a little better there. So it's like, it's tomato, tomato. You can use the Patriot or the Tiger, fitting your style. Bingo, there you go. So this is the dude for me. And I wanted to wait and make this video and buy this in the video. None of this will. I think I'm going to buy it. Ta-da! Nomad. What a butt kicker. Now, the one thing I didn't know, I'm going to find out right now, does this thing have any skins available? You just never know. No, nope, it does not. This, You're looking at it. It looks like this all the time. Okay, fine. That doesn't bother me. I was just curious. So this dude is a butt kicker. Now, let's do the first thing first. Let's look at this reload. 47 seconds. We're going to chop this down to, like I said, 37.6 or less. Historically, that's the case. It's it's under 80%. It's maybe around 78%. I haven't done the actual calculator. I use my brain power. Gun accuracy, 0 0.40. Yeah, we'll make this better. Let's go ahead and do do something here. First thing I like to do, shove in, enhance rations because this affects gun accuracy. 0.4 is now 0.38. Awesome. 
reload speed is dropped almost two seconds from 47. And now you'll notice the damage per minute is going to climb as well. But again, that doesn't matter. The spike damage is what we want for the 10 seconds that we're going to be firing for the most part. It might be 12 or 15 seconds. You get the general drift. So let's grab Hobby. Uh, as an auto loader, you, you don't have any advanced loader. It is an advanced loader, so that's out of the question. There's nothing more we can do except add a fan. This fan will increase or decrease the reload time, and it goes 44.15. It's now down almost another second. That's fantastic. Gun accuracy will increase. It was, what, 0.38 from 0.40? Should be 0.37 or 0.36. Okay, now well, let's go back here. Sometimes there's a, there's a delay in the results. Eh, it'll happen whenever it happens. Trust me, don't worry about that. Commander. Eh, we're just going to assign a commander. We're going to get my... Hilder, the hot girl. She's my top French commander. She has all the things that I need. Nomad. Yeah, she's in 1357, which is fantastic. Her 30% commander bonus is fantastic. So now, let's go look and see. Gun accuracy, 0.32. Phenomenal. For an autoloader, that's plenty good. Reload time. Down to 37.13. I told you 37.56 was 80%. Or 37.6, sorry. So we got this below 80% of the original factory number. So just remember, you're going to get 80% or less once you go through all the stuff and put all the right things on there. Super fantastic. Whoops, I hit the button. Now, here's another thing I like to do. This is just me personal. I'll spend the money to get the extra armor minus 5%. You better believe it, baby. Worth every penny. And now I want to add, I talk to fish. The speed of this guy, 37, is okay. It's not great. But, haha, look, we still have... Enhanced targeting, we don't need that. Enhanced targeting, say goodnight, chump. We're going to replace that with this stabilizer. Expensive, but you only have to buy it once. So now, gun accuracy is down to what? It's going to be below 30. It will be once it the, the lag there's sometimes it has lag in between the results so we'll come back to this and I'm thinking we need speed so add another 3.7 let's look at the engine go to the engine 37 kilometers it's going to add 10% of speed so that's going to be 40.7 it'll be It'll say 41, most likely. So basically, it's 40 or 41. Whoops, wrong one. There you go. Let's go ahead and do speed. Oh, expensive. That's 1,830,000 and another four, uh, 2.3 million, basically. All right. ka -ching. Now watch the speed is up to 40. So that's how it does that. And the gun, it hasn't changed yet, but it will. I don't know why it hasn't changed, but it will. Uh, we got to have here, you really have to have the medical kit of one kind or another. And this one, the toughie is, do we want to go with gold or regular? Now, 50% money making is good. I didn't remember if it was 50 or 60, but uh, 50 is good. And that's one of the key things. 
this dude hmm, I'm gonna go gut reaction is we're gonna go with gold repairs because it is a heavy tank and it will have some early fighting going on let's take a look at this guy again it hasn't changed but it will sometimes it's just there's lag other thing I do is got to go here and change this premium so what is the premium I don't care about this ammo um, I'm gonna say three shots 18 probably is good all right now Dun, 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 dun. That has, we've done everything possible for this tank. Turret, okay. Yeah, 40.7. As we anticipated, 830. That's not a problem. So basically, we're done with this guy. This is another expensive French tank. AMX M449. So Nomad doing very well. This is really going to be great. I'm going to have to go take this out and see what it's like well I took it to a match and it performed exactly as I expected and my team performed unfortunately as I anticipated they were garbage I did get a kill in this tank which was fantastic because again it's the spike damage of your engagement that demonstrates the power of this tank rolled out there got off a couple of shots killed the guy was still alive we were just overrun because you had tens not doing their job you shove an eight tank in a ten match there's not a lot you can do if you get a kill you're doing something right okay outgunned in an eight match this thing is gonna be a beast it's just that simple if you know how to use it right so all I can say very happy with the result of this tank it's really good all the tanks that I was considering are all good so if you're considering those tanks hopefully I helped you out so that's the main point of this video is to help you make the decision to show you the process that we used and Yes, I had, I had decided in my own mind that I was going to get this tank. And it, it did what I expected. Because I flayed this tank multiple times in different versions. So I know that, for example, the Jackal that I don't have will be awesome when I get it. It's just, it's one of those French autoloaders. And I'm good with those French autoloaders. They work great for me because I know how to play them. So hopefully I've helped you make your decision. Thanks for watching the video. Please like the video, subscribe, tell your friends. Hopefully they'll be able to use this to their advantage as well. And I have more videos coming. Obviously, I make videos every day. So check back later and I'll see you then. Thanks again for watching.